Hi, I'm Sharon Rackham King. I'm here in Portland at the Sharon Media, and I'm for American Diesel painting on their wonderful water media surface panel. This is upside down, don't worry, I'll be turning it around if it's hard to visualize right now. We're the Watercolor Society of Oregon Convention, and so we like to try new things here. So we've got some live demos going on in addition to different class work. I'm using uh, watercolor on the American Easel water media panel. So it's so cool. When I decide I want to go for a different orientation, I just pick the whole thing up. Okay. It's a beautiful cabinetry, how they're built. And this surface is tough. You never have to stretch it. It's not paper. It doesn't buckle. It's always ready for you. And then all you have to do when you're done to hang it is to just put a wire on the back of it and you're good to go. Sometimes I paint, I use a metallic paint and paint and on the edges around it so it kind of looks like a metal frame. But some people really prefer just the natural wood or to stain it with a wood stain. So it's really, really versatile. Can't always, you know, some shows don't accept don't accept um, panels like the, the purest shows like Watercolor Society of Oregon. Um, that is a an incredibly minor barrier to all the wonderful things that the American Easel panels will do for you. So just looking at my photo reference to see sometimes I paint upside down intentionally sometimes. Oh, yeah. Let's get the dark list. <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> so, and Zach is filming for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I flipped the camera around. Getting used to different products. Man, that was going really oh, I'm liking that. Oh, someone give us a thumbs up. Hey, thank you. No, don't frame needed for this baby. You can. You can put a frame around it, but no frame is needed for this. You just paint. You don't have to worry about the rest of it. You just paint. Sometimes I leave a white background. Sometimes I splatter in the white areas. Sometimes there's, you know, a little jungle back behind it, but you can do, of course, any subject matter that you want on these panels. If you get, if you get a lot of water. The drips are fantastic. I'm, I'm choosing so far, in so much as an artist has a choice in these matters, to not make it as, oh man, well that's going to that's gonna become a petal. That's going to have a, a, leaf, a leaf coming up, which is great, that I'm not going to work on right now. Um, but I think I, I think I lost my train of thought, and I can move on to something new. Oh no, this is um, good. <laughs> I'm doing good. So, painting and talking at the same time is exciting, and then painting and talking and knowing that people are actually watching is kind of a different thing. Um, I'm going to show the flexibility again by... Oh yeah. This way. Oh, the drips. I was talking about some drips. I want, I want this to not be a real drippy... Uh, you can make it twin twin twin, twin, but the water travels beautifully. I will see if we can 
Throw some classical music in the back and just watch you paint. <laughs> Yeah, I am Bob Ross. <laughs> I have Bob Ross's hair. Uh. So I can, we, all, we all can pretend. Um, I love the way the paint moves on the water media panel. I love that it's... When you need to do it, you can do it, but it just stays on, and it makes the colors really vibrant. This is watercolor. So people... See this, and I have a little gallery in Corvallis called the Hold Studio. People see this at the Hold. Check it out. And they say, "Well, wait, that's not you're a watercolor artist, right? Yeah, kind of primarily. That's not watercolor. It sure is. How can it be? Those colors are so vivid. But it's it's true. This panel helps with that a lot. You get just a nice white background." And so it's your art that shows up. You don't have to worry about um, the, you know, not that there's anything wrong with watercolor paper. I'm here at the Watercolor Society of Oregon convention, and we don't want to say anything negative about watercolor paper. <laughs> yeah. Right, Tammy? We don't want to do that. It's just an alternative method to avoid framing. It's just an alternative to avoid framing. And you know, you go in your studio, you paint, and you love it, and that's, you're just in your happy place. You can fly out of the studio and framing. It's like, oh, this is a bummer. Um, I mean, it can be. Some of us really enjoy different aspects of it. And um, it tastes, oh, there was a good, there was a good drip, but I actually don't want that drip, so I'm just, look, I, I took care of it. Um, the panel gives a lot of flexibility with just being able to lift, but also being able to move the, the paint around. So you try the nice one, it's a little bit more than shadowy. Natural, like the fold of the flower. There's some really nice uh, wet and wet that's happening right here, and and I think it's really cool. You can see the yellow that's underneath this still, and then the red and blue mix, which is essentially purple for those of us who are familiar with color wheel. That, um, going on top of it, is not making a gray. You're able to see the yellow coming right through that purple. And so, that's a special effect that you can't get all the time. That's, that's something that um, is harder on paper, at least for me, to do than it is on canvas. I like it so much, I'm gonna keep doing it here. <laughs> Not looking at the reference photo right now, just kind of seeing what the painting is I'm liking it. asking for. The always supportive Zach helping me out from America. <laughs> yep, yep. And um, so American Easel is a family owned company in Salem, Oregon, and it is so cool to be able to know the folks that create these products and the market these products and that bring them out here for all of us artists to try. Um, it's always great to support these Oregon companies. It doesn't get any more local than today in Oregon. I personally live in Corvallis. All these folks here from Watercolor Society of Oregon have come from all over the state. And um, they get really excited too when they learn that these products are made in Oregon. Family owned company. Um, 
And so it's just a nice way to be able to have a link to your own community and, and feel that you're doing a little bit to support somebody else who's out here making an honest living and helping us throw your love out. Where you have color in one spot of a painting, it's good to find that in other spots. So, see how easily I just pick it up, turn it into exactly any one. Are you good? Just go with the flow. Speaking of flow, we're going to have a special guest for a day. Who's an amazing American Eastlander. Yeah, she's going to be here for Yeah. <laughs> so yes, Renee is one of the uh, yep, here's Renee. Of the notable Renee. artists in Hi. Oregon, <laughs> and um, she does great work with American Easel panels as well, and likes a lot of the flexibility that they offer. She's also not the biggest fan of framing, you know. Like <laughs> you can I'm see. a big fan of what you're doing. <laughs> You could, you could, one of the other aspects about not having to, I was talking about the, like, I don't really want to spend my time framing, I want to spend my time painting aspect, but another piece of it is, that Renee has pointed out, is that you don't have the glass in front of it, you get to see it, you get to see all the aspects of the painting, and so, to, to have watercolor, that is so traditionally handled so carefully and so precious, to just have it fresh and presentable and right there in front of you with no barrier is a new possibility that American Easel brings us. Nice. So trying to incorporate some of this color that I got over here, bring it to the other side. Depends on what the show is. So now and and then you can see this kind of modeling, the texture, the nice texture on here, which can be sanded and changed so that it's more like hot press or more like. Cold press. I don't know if you guys can see that in the. You know, oh, yep, you see, I got it. Like, you can you can see some of the texture. Sometimes if you go like at an extreme side angle, you can see the yes. texture. Yes. And uh, that, yeah. Oh, here's a good, here's a good little area right there where you can see I just skipped the brush over. It was a bit of a dry brush effect. Skipped it over so that the the rise and fall of the bumps on the canvas captured that little paint effect right there. So I can, like I said earlier. I wanted to bring some of this color over here. I did that. Now I can see that I want to bring some of um, this darker value in here. So let me try to do that on the fly. Look at me taking chances like a big risk taker. Oh my God. Heck yeah. So Go proud. for it. Go for it. So I'm, I'm turning my brush, which is a, a trick I learned. I'm just spinning it in between my fingers. You know, quite a long time ago, I learned this trick. If you're drawing tree branches, you spin your pencil. And it looks like I need to reload a little bit with fresh paint. And when you do that, you get a really nice natural um, twist. It's not too much, but it, it shows um, just a more natural effect. Oh, these are cool. This is a, this is a cute little shape of here. I want to emphasize a bit, but then the side of my brush went went on its own journey. <laughs> I'll try to correct a little bit here. Nobody saw that, right? Nobody saw that. That part's not important. Don't worry about that part. There we go. So, want to bring some of this darker value over here, and I guess. This was pretty successful. It, it worked well. Now, 
now. I want to, I've clearly gotten some red and some blue on my brush. I've gotten some edges on here that I want to clean up just a bit. Um, and I don't want to look at one anything to look like a hard line. So I'm kind of, you know, I don't want to look at someone earlier so that feels like there was a bit of a feather effect. And what does that mean? <laughs> I think it was useful. Yeah, we had some comments on the painting demo today. Look at just like just watch, you know, you can see it's like eh, it's pretty yellow. I think that's that's great. And then just like just a tiny, a tiny flick of the wrist. Yeah. Something that um Something that I was thinking about recently was the difference between gestural painting and other kinds of painting. And I, I believe gestural is using your elbow and your shoulder as if you're making gestures and talking to people. And so um, gestural is going to be looser, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be um, not as neat and tidy. And then, um, whereas what I was doing here earlier with just spinning, spinning the brush and um, trying to get a nice little hair bristle edge, I can finish that process here. Um, see how that makes just a nice, really uneven, natural area there. I'll cover up a couple of pencil lines just because I'm just obsessive about that. Um, that is that kind of fine motor skill versus getting your shoulder into it. Right now, I think it's time for me to take a look at my reference photo. I don't want to go too far away from that, especially because I'm using darker colors at the moment. When I'm using darker colors, I can't as easily cover over I want to make sure that I'm bringing some of the dark down into the stem. I've got a bit of that. I've gotten some of the red and blue down in there already. And we're here for a minute. I want the watercolors to find it for again. On friends. We're the Sheridan in Portland. We have two conferences every year for uh, Watercolor Society of Oregon, and American is so kind to come and join us. Um, just about, just like all, all the time. Every time we have a convention, y'all show up and support us and bring us cool samples and Heck yeah. some, you know, give some, give some artists a chance to get up here and play. And, um, you know, it's not just me here at this table, too. We have folks over using yep. uh, materials, the American yeah. artists, excuse me, American Easel has provided two artists to just have to experiment with a little bit and mm -hmm. try out what they might want yeah. to do. Do you know, say I do a painting on this, can, if I don't like it, can I just sew over it and do another one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, these are really versatile. If I do, because I know it's an investment, it seems like versus a piece of paper, it seems like an investment. Mm -hmm. But then how I have been able to look at it is, but then if something doesn't work, if there's something that I'm not very about, then I could always just like adhere the fresh watercolor painting over the top of it, or you can even sand it. Yeah, there's so right. many different things here. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Yeah, so. but there's this nice finish on it now, so I don't want to <laughs> get rid of that. Are these um, Are these a discounted price? or? Um, I, as far as I know, it's just a sell price. Okay. Yeah, they're actually, um, you can purchase them over at our friends, the Mary Artists. 
Yeah. yeah. The and they'll group. take care of you. They're the ones that are actually selling. We make them. Oh, okay. And then, yeah. yeah, they sell them. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they're made in Salem. Yes. And they're beautiful. The cabinetry on them is beautiful. Yeah. So I showed it to my dad, and he had never seen one of these before. So look at this cabinetry. I paid for it over here. Yes, they'll take care of you. And it was kind of funny for me at first to think of what, what do you mean cabinetry? <laughs> I don't really understand. But it is. I mean, I want to show you it's how great it is. So, you've got all these nice edges. And you can put metallic paint on. You can stain it. You can leave it natural. You can put like a clear gloss on. You could even, you know, paint it with acrylic paint for different colors um, for the edges. But, I mean, for the back, it, this, it never warps. It's just rock solid. You never have to stretch your water paper and put it on here. It's just here. It's this surface. This whole thing. It's awesome. The that they use to spray paint the surface onto it. Well, hey, there, it's right side up now. We can get I'm liking that. perspective of it. That's looking you know, awesome, yeah. We have areas to fill in, but... We can see the form. This is actually a tulip. That's one of those. It has that the variegation, variegated edge in it. So that's what I'm going for today. Yeah, it has great colors. Right. Find my reference photo that's right side up this time. I think I'm up. So my brain doesn't have to translate. So much. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna end this one. Yeah. Right. Thank you guys. Bye.